so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'll sign it. Thank you all for being here tonight. We appreciate you. And as always, we give thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. giving us our life and our health and our strength, allowing us to live in such a blessed and prosperous land. Well, guys, tonight is the cultivation of a lot of doggone hard work, a lot of hard work and commitment, not just by me and my team uh, and our campaign staff, but by a whole cadre of people across the state who believe in us, believe in our message, believe in our vision, and want to see North Carolina go in the right in the right direction and did the hard work it took to get through this uh, primary. So thank you each and every one of you. We were able to withstand withering attacks from our opponents, uh, all of which were baseless. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we firmly stand by what we believe in, who we are, and our story. Because our story is a great story. Our story is a story that's deeply rooted in North Carolina. It is the story of North Carolina, a story of being the underdog, a story of being the person who had to come back, the person who, who, the, the person who had to overcome obstacles to see a better day, just like North Carolina herself. You all know my story. Number nine of 10 children, growing up in an extremely poor household. I'm looking out here right now, I'm looking at my brothers out here. I've got brothers out here in the audience that I'm looking at them. I've got guys out here that are not my blood brothers, but are practically my spiritual brothers that have been through the same things that I've been through. They've seen the days of poverty. They've seen the days of hunger. They've seen the days of struggle. But like North Carolina herself, we've risen past that to see a better day. And we stand here on this stage now, ready to move forward, ready to move forward into that better day. And I would be remiss right now if I did not give credit to the person I believe who is most responsible for my success. Other than my beautiful wife, Yolanda, who's standing here on the stage with me. The woman who I credit with making me the man that I am is my mother, Eva Mae Robinson. A woman who was left in 1979 with five children in her house. And she had a choice between welfare and work, and she chose work. And she worked her fingers to the bone to take care of her children and set a standard in her life. I would not be standing here right now if it was not for her. In fact, I am standing on her shoulders right this moment. I stand on the shoulders of my mother and all of those who came before me who laid the groundwork that made it possible for me to stand here as the first black lieutenant governor and possibly the first black governor of North Carolina. Now I'll tell you this, right in this general election, we're not gonna allow these folks to drag this campaign into the mud. Those who wanna go into the mud, feel free. Where we're going is we're going towards the substantive issues that all North Carolinians face. The things that will make North Carolina great, that will take her to our next level of success. What are those things? Those are those important things. Education and our economy. Those are the things we're gonna focus on. When it comes to our, our economy here in North Carolina, my vision is to see to it now that we've come out of the economic doldrums of 2010 and prior, where we were $3.4 billion in debt to the federal government and were furloughing state workers and teachers didn't get a raise for six years, to now a, a day where we see through Republican leadership that we now have a $5 billion surplus. We're giving teachers a raise with raises, state troopers raises. Everybody wants to come here and do business. We're the number one business destination, two years running. But I would submit to you now the vision, the call, the mission is to grow this state, to grow its economy, as we like to say, from Murphy to Manio, so that every part of the state has economic opportunity. I believe the way that we do that and sustain that is by having a great education system. 
and making refor reformations in our education system, removing agendas from the classroom and getting back to classical education, reading, writing, and mathematics, civics, history, and all those things that teach our children how to be great citizens of this constitutional republic, teaching them the values and giving them the skills they need so that they not only succeed inside of the classroom, but they take what they've learned in that classroom, outside of that classroom, and succeed in life. That is the goal. So, folks have heard a lot about me throughout this campaign. Much of it has been false. Those of you all who know me know who I am. I am a person who has a deep love for the state of North Carolina. Why? Because the state of North Carolina has been doggone good to Mark Robinson. From the time I was a little poor kid growing up in, right here in Greensboro, over off of Logan Street, to the time I was a young man in the United States military, to the time when I was a young father, struggling to take care of my family. To this very moment standing on this stage as the Republican nominee for governor of this great state. This state has been doggone good to me. And now it is time for me to repay the debt of gratitude that I have to this great state and its people. I look out across this group of people who, stand, who are standing in front of me now and I see the struggles and successes that symbolize North Carolina. I look at each and every one of you and I see folks that I worked in furniture with. I see some people that I worked in the restaurant business with. Tens of thousands of jobs. We're expanding broadband to every corner of North Carolina and building a clean energy economy. Roy, for your leadership and all you have done for North Carolina, we thank you. And friends, we are just getting started. I also want to thank Justice Mike Morgan and the other candidates in this race for their service to the state and our people. I am grateful to all the elected officials, community leaders, and organizations that are already an integral part of our team. But most importantly, I want to thank you, all the North Carolinians who participated in today's election. Today, we took an important first step. But we must be clear-eyed about the stakes of this election. We're at a crossroads, and the choice before us, two competing visions for North Carolina. Mark Robinson's vision is bleak and divisive consumed by spite and hate. He spends time pitting people against each other. Let me tell you a bit about Mark Robinson's disturbing agenda, urging parents to abandon our public schools, vilifying all kinds of people, including public school teachers, women, LGBTQ North Carolinians, glorifying violence against political opponents, opposing health care coverage for working families, promoting conspiracy theories, and stripping women of their reproductive freedoms. Robinson wants a total ban on abortion with no exceptions, not for rape, not for incest, not for the life or health of the mother. Robinson would insert himself into the doctor's office with women and dictate to them what they must do with their bodies. You better believe that Robinson's extreme views would scare away business and good paying jobs. We've been down this road before here, HB2, the bathroom bill, and it is a dead end. It cost us billions of dollars in economic activity. Instead of waging job-killing culture wars, let's grow the economy. My vision for North Carolina is forward-looking and inclusive. 
It would harness the talents of all of our people so that we can build a North Carolina that is safer and stronger, rooted in our shared values of freedom and opportunity for every person. I'm running for governor because I love North Carolina, and I believe in its promise that if you work hard, where you come from should never limit how far you can go. <laughs> that our children and grandchildren should enjoy a better and brighter future than we've had. That every North Carolinian has a fair shot at prosperity, getting a good paying job or starting a small business anywhere in this state, including small town North Carolina. So we must build this economy from the bottom up and the middle out, not the top down. That is how we grow the middle class. The rising cost of housing, gas, groceries, medicine, and other basic needs is making life too expensive for too many families. As Attorney General, I have fought against price gougers and predatory corporations that exploit North Carolinians. And as your governor, I will keep working to lower costs, raise the minimum wage, and cut taxes for working families. <laughs> our top priority must be educating our kids. Yet year in and year out, the Republican General Assembly is failing them, dropping North Carolina to 49th in the country and what we invest in K-12 as a share of our state's economy. 46th in starting teacher pay, worse than every neighboring state. It is a disgrace. <laughs> That's why, as your Attorney General, I have fought to fully fund our public schools and have a strong teacher in every classroom and a strong principal in every school. As your next governor, I will work to ensure that our schools are the best that they can be, to strengthen career and technical education and apprenticeship programs because a person should not have to go to college in order to provide for his or her family. <laughs> and to support our educators because it is past time that they got a real raise. No one should have to worry about their children's safety when they're at school or online, or their loved ones when they're at work or at worship. As Attorney General, my office has prosecuted and convicted murderers, rapists, child sex abusers, and drug traffickers. I have worked across the aisle to keep you safe, partnering with Republicans and Democrats to fight the opioid epidemic, protect kids, from child sex abuse, improve our criminal justice system, and eliminate the largest rape kit backlog in the entire nation. As governor, I will continue to tackle violent crime, confront the fentanyl crisis, and work to recruit and retain well-trained law enforcement officers it is all about protecting you and your families. Every North Carolinian should be able to get good health care, no matter where they live or how much money they earn. That's why, as your Attorney General, I successfully defended the Affordable Care Act at the United States Supreme Court and championed Medicaid expansion here in North Carolina. And as governor, I will work to continue to expand access to quality, affordable health care. And let me be clear about reproductive health care, contraception, IVF, and abortion. As governor, I will veto any further restrictions on women's reproductive freedoms. I 
believe that those decisions are deeply personal and must be made by the woman with her doctor and her loved ones, not by a bunch of politicians like Mark Robinson. I, I've been called to public service by my faith and my family. My faith teaches me that we are each called to do our part and to make a difference. My parents raised my brother, my sister, and me to stand up for what's right, just like they did. And my folks, Jane and Adam, are here tonight. Thank you, Mom and Dad. And to my wife, Anna, who is also here tonight. I am deeply grateful for your steadfast support and your caring heart. I love you, sweetie. <laughs> to our kids, Sam, Adam, and Leah, you are the reason that your mom and I do what we do. North Carolina is our home. And fighting for our future, it is personal. Anna and I pray that our children and grandchildren and your children and grandchildren also want to call North Carolina home. It is a, our deep love for this place that lights a fire in our bellies to fight for a better future for every North Carolinian. And when I travel across the state, I see that too, a love for North Carolina and an optimism for our future. I am energized by the North Carolinians I've met, the stories that they share with me, the priorities that they want us to achieve together. Folks like Brian, an Army veteran and a sandwich shop owner in Fayetteville, breathing life into Hay Street and bringing smiles to the community. Like Debbie in Cornelius, who tragically lost her son Hunter to a fentanyl overdose, but is turning her pain into purpose to help others who are struggling with addiction. Like Kelsey, a registered nurse working at Wake Med who is studying at night to become a family nurse practitioner so that she can move back home and take care of folks in Eastern North Carolina. They and so many others are the strength of our state. And this campaign is about fighting for them, fighting for their families, and fighting for each and every one of you. So we have to get to work. Please join us. Sign up at joshstein.org or text Josh to 40503. We need your help. And there is room for everybody, no matter what party or what part of this state you're in. If you believe in North Carolina's promise, there is a home for you in this campaign. So join us, knock on doors, talk to your friends and neighbors, chip in a few dollars if you're able, and vote. Together we will not only defend our governorship, we will break the supermajority, elect some judges, retain the White House, and build a North Carolina that is safer, stronger, and more prosperous for everybody. Thank you, and may God bless all of you.